one of our concerns. The, the signage like that really doesn't fall under the police department uh, to remove it. You would do enforcement. That would be the DPW commissioner. Um, and you'd probably need an engineering study if you were gonna remove that. Another issue you'd have to ask the commissioner is that intersection may be under the jurisdiction of Mass Highway. So now you'd have to deal with them if that's under their jurisdiction. But my biggest concern would be a sight line problem there. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna um, look for Councillor Schultz for uh, feedback on that. Yeah, I, I was contacted by uh, Mr. Freeman and uh, I think uh, the thinking was that, uh, it, it, you know, the fire station used to be there. So it was a very busy intersection that he thought that maybe it, that's why the sign was put there originally because there was so much uh, going on at the fire station. But, you know, that, that fire station has been, been uh, you know, was decommissioned and uh, the, the business that's in there now, there doesn't seem to be much, much uh, traffic coming out of there. Uh, very often. So he thought maybe it would be helpful to, for, for the traffic in that area to be able to make that right turn. Uh, I, as far as the sight line, I, 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 I've, been to, I've been to that intersection many times. I don't see the, the sight line problem, but I'm not an expert like uh, Sergeant Boudreaux as far as that goes. So, uh, but uh, yeah, it's something that, that I, I thought might be something that we could discuss and maybe uh, uh, look at it some, you know, at, at this time. So that's where, that's where I'm at right now, Councilor Green. Okay, thank you. Um, Council Van Hasinga. Thank you. Uh, Sergeant Boudreaux, I was wondering if you could elaborate on your concerns about the sight line. Um, just because with my knowledge of the intersection, the traffic turning right off the bridge, is a very wide intersection. So there, there is a lot of visibility from that spot where, where a car turning right would be. Um, two cars coming uh, north on Water Street. And also for cars traveling north on Water Street, there's the length of the intersection provides a lot of visibility to cars that would be trying to turn right. So I'm just curious uh, what angle you're, you're concerned about there. Well, I think, Council, I agree with you. It's, it's, a, it's a wide intersection. But if you think about where the cars should stop, they both should be stopped at the stop line. Now you're edging your way out into that intersection to see traffic coming. Mm -hmm. um, and we really shouldn't, in my estimation anyway, shouldn't be doing that at a set of traffic lights. Uh, that's what the traffic lights are for. Um, but again, I'm, I'm not an expert on traffic lights. That's why I said um, the DP, DPW commission will really have jurisdiction over that type of signage. Um, mm -hmm. so, and we would need an engineering study irregardless. Um, so I would say that you should be speaking to him more about this than me. Thank you. Um, Councillor Walsh. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, 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 there's a, a street, and I, I can't think of the name of the street off the top of my head, that comes down to Water Street right at that intersection. And, and I think there is traffic that comes down there, so that right turn on red might, might be an issue as well. But I, yeah, I, I think it... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Sergeant. No, that's okay. I don't want to interrupt you, Councillor. I think that's Boyle Court you're talking about. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and, and perhaps I, I think Sergeant Boudreaux um, has a good idea, maybe have the, the DPW, the, the commissioner take a look at that. And before we decide anything uh, this evening, maybe refer it to them. Thank you. Thank you. And um, Councillor Kucher. I've been to that intersection numerous times, uh, many, many uh, times during, uh, during the day late at night, uh, late at night's not a problem. Um, you know, early morning, you got a lot of, a uh, lot of buses going, you know, a lot of kids going to school, uh, a lot of heavy traffic there. Um, I've been stuck at that light. It, it is a nuisance. Um, I think we really need to work on the lights up at, uh, the, uh, water street, Laurel, uh, Laurel street area first, but, um, you know, honestly, I think it would be more of a safety hazard uh, on that in that intersection. Thank you, um, Councillor Schultz. Would you would you like to um, make a motion to send this to DPW before we make any ruling on it tonight? Yeah, uh, maybe we could uh, send it to the Public Works Committee for their for the next meeting for the for the commissioner. Maybe we could discuss it there, Amy, and maybe he could uh, we could get a, get some. In, 
you know, feedback from, from uh, Commissioner Bossanetto at that time? Would that be reasonable? Okay. Yeah. Would, would you like to do that in a, in a motion to forward? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to make a motion to, to refer this to the, uh, the Public Works Committee for, for further study. Second. Second. Madam, I have Chair, a mo Madam Chair, I don't Speaking think Mr. Schultz is on this committee. He's That's right. Yeah, I'm a petitioner. Can I make I, the motion? Yeah. I, I will. I will make the motion on well, behalf of uh, Councillor Schultz. And I will second it. Okay. Who seconded? Just for my notes. Me. Thank you. All right. So I have a motion and a second to um, refer petition zero eight nine two zero on to Public Works. Speaking on the motion. Hearing none, we will forward that on to the Public Works Subcommittee. Thank you. Thank you. Next petition, uh, 120. Council, excuse me, I, I think we need a vote, don't we? Oh, we'll, we'll do okay. a, a roll call vote on that. Thank you. Um, Councillor Van Hazinga. Yes. Councillor Walsh. Yes. Councillor Couture. Yes. And myself, Councillor Green. Yes. And... It's unanimous. Thank you. Councilor Boschman. Boschman. Yes. Oh, Councilor Boschman, sorry, you're wicked small on my list right here, Councilor Boschman. Thank you. <laughs> As we go on through the night, I'll get better at my notes and all my <laughs> add-ins and everything, I promise. Um, okay, so motion carries unanimously. Uh, next on the agenda, petition 12820, Councilor Paul Boschman to petition that all applicants applications for a dealer's license must be for a 10 car minimum. Um, I, I guess Councillor Boschman will hear from you first as the partitioner. Underneath the, uh, we had a meeting in the legislative affairs and that got placed on hold because uh, they wanted to talk to the commissioner, which is Mark and Mark sent us a letter saying that he was in favor. He's in favor of the minimum 10 cars um, and that, so I would presume that we wait for the legislative affairs to come back with what they have to say and put this on hold. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Walsh. Um, I'm not sure if uh, Councillor Kucher was before me or is that an old. I no, I think, I think we. Did it at okay. the same oh, okay. time. You you put up your uh, your initials, and I said just motion to hold. Okay. Um. I, I I guess I just yeah. I I would I would concur with that. We also referred it to um. We we talked about having the planning board and the zoning board take a look at this petition as well, because it involves all of that. So I I know that uh, Mr. Barbadoro has sent a letter, and he's um wholly in favor of this. So I think if we hold this until um we hear from planning and zoning. Um, just to get all of those aspects, you know, about this petition, and and uh, then we can move forward at that time. Okay. Okay. Um, Sergeant Boudreau, is there anything that you uh, want to add? No, oh, Councillor. The uh, chief spoke um, at the legislative affair meeting last week. Um, so the traffic unit really has in the in the lots. Um, we would always go out if they were petitioning for a license to make sure there isn't issues out in the street. Um, but at this point, we really have no say in this. Okay, thank you. And um, Mr. Swalski, I see that you'd like to comment. Uh, sure, if, if I could just make a, a quick comment about uh, Councillor Boschman and I have discussed this previously and I coordinated with um, Commissioner Barbadora on his response. Um, but I guess two, two things, um, number one, something that should be considered before any decisions made um, with regard to automobile licenses. You know, I, I wonder if there should be a distinction between uh, properties whose sole focus is to sell automobiles and then um, perhaps an auto repair facility that might be selling a car or two and has a license to do so. You see quite a few um, automobile repair facilities that do that and I worry a bit about unintended consequences there, but you know, I certainly concur with um, Mark Barbado's letter. I, I think you know it creates both a visual and a safety blight at times when we have um, used car lots on you know posted stamp size lots. I, I think it's in part a license um, issue, but also a zoning one. 
Um, and one thing I could offer, you know, we're in the midst of a zoning reform effort right now. Um, and, you know, at least on the zoning side, that is something that we could have our consultants at BSC look into um, as to, you know, how to solve for this uh, problem related to um, use or car lots more generally. I say use car lots, most of them are used, but not all. Um, whether we're talking about customer parking, parking for the workers, um, and, and what are the dimensional requirements for the lots themselves. So I think there's some important zoning considerations in addition to the license considerations. And I'd be happy to take that up to BSC, which, you know, we've got a team of consultants. That's what they are really here for, so. Thank you. Um, Councillor Kucher. I, I want to follow up with Tom's comments. I'm very concerned about this, about uh, small businesses um, with, you know, use, uh, not use car lots, but garages that, you know, have a, might have a vehicle that they want to sell um, and put it out there and they have to get a special license. Um, I'm, I'm very concerned about this, about limiting the amount that what you would consider yourself a uh, um, a private dealer, or are you going to be uh, a used car lot? Um, I don't think we should limit the number, but depending on the area and what um, you know what they're trying to do, if it's going to be constant, I understand. Okay, we probably need a limit, but for right now. I mean, if it's just a used car lot or a used car lot, maybe, but if it's a garage, there should be an exemption. Thank you. Councillor Van Hasinga. Thank you. Um, I share those concerns about uh, excluding um, dealers that may just have a car or two, like, like the garage that, that Tom and Andrew mentioned. Um, but I think it's also important to consider that sometimes there just isn't space on these lots to have all these different uses. Uh, recently, we had an application for a dealer's lot at the bottom of Oak Hill Road, and it's a, just one of three uses of the property. It's a very small site. There's going to be a garage there, and the owner of the property was going to maintain um, his office there for a taxi business. So you have three uses on a very small lot with only maybe three parking spaces on site, and two of them are going to be cars to sell. It, it just Sometimes it just doesn't work. So I, I think we do have to look at this closer. And I'm not quite sure what the answer is, but um, I think some sort of regulation is reasonable for this. Thank you. And, uh, and back to um, Andrew, or to Councillor Kucher. I understand where you're coming from, uh, uh, Councillor Van Hasinga, uh, but um, you know, what, if, if they have an offsite area where they can, uh, they can store cars or something like that, uh, I don't think they should be limited um, with, uh, in regards to the licensing. Thank you. I guess um, before us- Ma Madam Chair, I'd like to say one thing. Do, are you not using your chat? I'm trying to, if it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Call the keyboard. Right. <laughs> I'm using the keyboard right. too. Right, Councilor <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it does. Oh, there it is. All right, hold on. There you go. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Uh, just to, uh, to tell Councilor Kutcher this much, um, and uh, I understand your concerns about small businesses, but there is such a thing where we're putting too many cars on, on a lot and you can't even move. And a prime example was on the corner of Putnam Street and Laurel Street, and what they call it one stop. And the city got upset because he, they, they were, they, the cars were parked in there like sardines. There were so many cars that you couldn't even get in and into that lot. And we as a council sometimes set the rules. A prime example, River Street Auto, they came in front of us for a permit. He wanted 25. We told him, why don't you go to 50? So we gave him a license for 50 because he had a big lot. But there are, there's a place, some places on Water Street, they, they got them cramped, cramped in there like sardines and you can't even move around. 
and, and this one here that I'm talking about, I'm not going to mention any names, he repairs cars there too. So do Wonder- we want to stay the way we are, want to, or do we want to raise the bar a little bit and say we're better than this? That's my what- thing. Wonder if we could do a temporary license. Well, I again before us tonight is um, to petition that all applications for a dealer license must be for ten cars minimum. So, what I'm hearing is that we probably shouldn't make any decisions on this until it goes through the proper channels for for our guidance on what we're doing with rezoning what we're doing with legislative affairs what we're doing with all the other committees that have their hand in this with a far bigger outreach than than public safety i make the motion we hold second Second. i have a motion and second to hold petition 12820 um speaking on the motion hearing none we'll do this by uh, roll call, and I'll get everybody this time. Uh, Councillor Van Hazenga. Yes. Councillor Walsh. Yes. Councillor Boschman. Yes. Councillor Kucher. Yes. And Councillor Green is a yes. So we have petition 12820 to hold. Thank you. Councilor Petition 16120, Councilor Bernie Schultz and resident Antea Lewis of 143 Charles Street to add stop signs on Charles Street in both directions at the intersection of Charles and Forest Streets. And I'll have Sergeant um, Boudreau talk about that, please. Um, so by putting stop signs there, there's already stop signs on the both uh, sides of Forest Street. So you'd be making a four-way stop. Um, we don't do four-way stops. We only do those under extreme conditions. Um, when we follow the MUTCD manual for those. Um, so we would not recommend putting stop signs there um, because it would be a four-way stop. Thank you. I have Councillor um, Schultz to speak. Yeah, I, I, I'm not recommending a four-way stop. I know the reluctance to, to have four-way stops in the city. The only one we have is at uh, Pearl and North Streets. Um, what we're, what I'm looking to do is to add stop signs at Forest Street on both sides so that people really see the signs and stop. Because as, as you said in the previous petition, the sight line is really poor there. There's uh, there's former variety stores on each, each corner, the corner of uh, Forest, and there's a there's one on the other side of Forest and Charles. So there's, there's one on each side coming up the hill from, uh, from Laurel Street going to Forest Street that, that hit Charles Street. I grew up in that area. I grew up on Charles Street. I, I know that there's been a lot of accidents and there was a recent accident there in, in, in between the time I filed the petition and it, it, it's coming before the committee tonight that there was a, uh, another accident uh, there. There was an accident previous to that when the petition was originally filed. So it's been a bad, I mean, I, I, I lived there for many years, uh, you know, growing up, it's always been, I've seen accidents there uh, at Forest and Child. So it's, it's really a bad interest. I'd really like to emphasize that stop signs be placed on both sides. So they really see the stop sign and they stop because they come down Child Street and they, they if you're coming up the hill, especially, you, 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 you may not see the, the people coming down Child Street in either direction because there's a block on either side of Forest Street at the stop sign coming up the hill. So that's uh, that's why I filed the petition and I hope, I've discussed it with Commissioner Bossonetto and he, he said that, you know, it's not unusual that we put double stop signs there to make sure that people uh, people stop at, at Forest Street. So that's, uh, that's all I have to say. And I hope that you'll agree with me on this one. Um, next, Councillor Boschman. I like to I like to amend the petition. The double double uh, stop signs being on place on Forest Street, and they being three feet wide, not the standard stop signs, the big ones. And we put the big stop signs up. But we have to amend the petition because he has it as red Charles Street, and it's on Forest Street that the, uh, the stop signs are. So I like to amend the petition 
to saying that the stop signs be double stop signs be placed on on uh, the Forest Street, north and south. Well, it, Paul, they would they would be partly on Child Street because it you'd have to put them up far enough that they they're really on Child Street as well. So I don't know. It's a it's a it's a minor technicality that that we say they're on Forest Street because they they're really on, they could be on Child Street as well. They'd be in, they'd be impacting Child Street as well. You know going over the line there. So it's up to you. I mean, I, it, it, as long as we get the stop signs, I, you can say that they're, they're on Child Street, you can say they're on Forest Street, it doesn't really matter. I, I would like to just hear again from Sergeant Boudreau uh, yeah, before I, we go about amending or anything. If I may, Council, is um, I don't believe that you need to amend this. Um, I don't think you need a petition here. We can work with uh, Councilor Schultz and with Commissioner Barzanetta. We've done it on many intersections. Um, he can put up whatever size signs are needed. We could possibly do double signs there. We could do bigger stop signs. We may want to put a, uh, a warning stop sign down the road from those stop signs, telling people that there's a stop sign coming up so it just doesn't come up on them. Um, all those things can be done without a petition. So I, I, I don't think you need to reword this petition. I think you could do leave to withdraw and I can work with the counselor and the commissioner. Um, and I think get the, the effect that he wants here. That would just be my recommendation to you. Thank you. I'll go back to um, Councillor Schultz on that where you are the petitioner. If you would like to um, give this leave to withdrawal and work directly with Sergeant Boudreaux and Mr. Bazanetto of the DPW. Yeah, I, I have no problem with that. That would be great if we could get those signs in and uh, I, I'd be happy to work with both gentlemen on, on, the, uh, on the stop signs. Thank you. I'll make a motion for uh, leave to withdraw uh, based Second. on Sergeant Boudreaux's recommendations. Second. Thank you. I have a motion and a second to give 16120 leave to withdraw. Speaking on the motion. Hearing none, we'll do a roll call. Uh, Councillor Van Hazinga. Yes. Councillor Walsh. Yes. Councillor Boschman. Yes. Councillor Couture. Yes. And myself, Councillor Green, is a yes. Thank you. Thank you, Sergeant Boudreau. Councillor. Uh, petition 17320. Councillors Marissa Fleming and Andrew Van Hazinga to increase the availability of on-street parking along Day Street as outlined in the enclosed petition. So we'll, I, um, we'll go right to Councillor Van Hazinga, please. Thank you. Uh, so as, as I'm sure all of you know, uh, Day Street is one way in almost its entirety with the exception of a small portion at the Southern end at Main Street. And that was preserved as two way as the request of a property owner of a vacant lot there right on the corner of Main and Day, who has since sold the property. Uh, it's already in the plans to convert it entirely to one way travel northbound as part of the bridge replacement. So this is something that's going to happen anyways. Um, the proposal is to move that up and convert it to one way travel now. And what that will allow us to do is to increase the availability of on street parking in this area. Uh, we would be able to add approximately four spaces in the area of the barber shops on the west side at the lower end at Main Street. We could add another nine spaces approximately in front of the Hotel Raymond on the um, east side towards Cherry Street. Um, and that does account for the hydrant that's there. That's the estimations of the DPW commissioner. And there's also a loading zone on the opposite side of the street in front of the municipal parking lot there which is used for loading and unloading uh, in conjunction with in a neighborhood business that accesses through that parking lot. So the proposal is to keep those loading spaces still as loading only, but just add a time restriction because they're only ever used before between 7 a.m. and 4 p.m. So why not let residents park or other visitors to the area in the evening hours or overnight there? Uh, so there is a lot of demand for parking, both for businesses on Main Street and also residents who live in Hotel Raymond or other properties. Um, that's going to increase once the apartment building at Main and Day is developed. And that, that was on the planning board when that um, project was permitted and it was understood by the developer and everybody that the uh, direction of, Main, of Day Street was going to go one way fully. 
So all of the permitting and all of the planning acknowledges that and works with that. So there's no change there. So if I have any questions about any specifics, I'd be happy to, to share any knowledge I have. I'm gonna to go to uh, Sergeant Boudreaux just for his uh, comments at this point. So one, one easy thing, Councillor, that's already been settled. <clears throat> um, the commission had come to me before we even looked at this, um, doing just what you said about going to one way um, as part of the bridge project. So we could alleviate that one more set of traffic light cycles. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to have backups even worse than we have now coming over the Water Street Bridge. Um, in looking at that and then looking at this petition, we actually found that no one went through the what they were supposed to to make that two lane, two way. Um, that was never passed through the council. We can't find anywhere it was ever passed. <laughs> Just so you know, the other day, um, the DPW had a company come in. That is one way already. Um, okay. Lights have been changed. It, it, mm. it, to begin with so it was very easy to rectify that part mm -hmm. so i think the parking spots in front of the um the barber shop um i don't think there'll be a problem with those uh, the other section i don't know if that's going to be wide enough to, to i know that you know you I, I just saw what you had sent out about an hour ago um when we looked at this petition we had no idea that's what this was for because that was a question I was going to ask tonight is who wants these extra parking spaces over there? Um, with the fire, we, we checked with the fire department. Um, when we're talking about the eight foot parking space on each side and that leaving 11 feet, um, usually when we talk about 11 foot wide lanes and an eight foot parking, that's two way traffic so that we still have a 22 foot roadway to work with. Um, our ladder truck is 10 feet, almost 11 feet wide. So put parking on both sides um, and we have to get that fire truck up there in a hurry, not to mention trailer trucks or large vehicles. We may have some problems there. Um, again, I'm gonna defer to Commissioner Bozzanetto who is a traffic engineer, I am not. Um, but just from that standpoint, I don't think that roadway is wide enough to put parking on both sides and, and make that lane in the middle usable. Um, the other thing I would question would be the parking overnight in these loading zones or after hours. I don't know how much like 35 Day Street uses that to drop off groceries, to drop people off, pick people up, um, things like that. So if you allow someone to park there, say at four o'clock till the next morning, I don't know if you'd be interrupting the people in like say 35 day. So that would be maybe a question to ask that business. Um, we didn't have those specifics that I knew about, so I just had uh, my traffic officers go up and just do a, a basic generic so that we know that, you know, the roadway is 27 feet wide at 35 day. Um, it really doesn't give you the width, I think, to do two parking spots and have a good travel lane. Um, it gets even narrower as you go up. Uh, up by 72 day, it's actually only 25 feet wide. So there are some issues there, but again, um, I'm not a traffic engineer. So I think some of these questions should go to the commissioner also. So the um, the 27 foot width is uh, according to the commissioner at Cherry Street. And it's actually a little wider um, at the main street end. So it narrows a bit and it's 27 feet at Cherry Street. And then yes. like you mentioned, it gets narrower further down. Um, so I understand what you're saying about the, the fire apparatus. And that's something that the commissioner did bring up. Um, so I think maybe it would be necessary to get input from uh, Chief Marama or the fire department to see what they're comfortable with. Um, in that area, there's actually the only parking on both sides in the area of that loading zone. And as far as I understand, the loading spaces are really only used by the trucks that um, uh, unload and load for select engineering through the, the parking lot. I don't believe it's really, I've never, I live up the hill and I've never seen anybody unloading or loading for 35 Day Street there. Um, now, one alternative, if there is concern about the narrowness there with parking on both sides is maybe we don't do the after hours parking in the loading zone. So that really, for all intents and purposes, give you parking on one side and occasionally a truck parked on the other side. Maybe that's a possibility. Yeah, I'm just looking back at some of the uh, some of the notes that they made. 
And um, where I'm talking about in front of 35 day, I believe just looking at some pictures that the traffic guys took, um, they thought that they had a loading area over there too, um, but I'm not sure. Those might just be no parking signs. I can't actually see them that great in the pictures. So, um, but I mean, again, that would be something we'd have to look at with both sides of the street. Um, yeah, I believe currently on the east side of the street, there's no parking, there's not loading zone there. Yes. So I guess my question, Councilor, would be if you opened up the parking on that side of 35 day, and then you still were allowing loading zones and having a trailer truck loading there, I just don't see that road being wide enough. But again, if, if the commissioner is telling you it is, maybe it is, but I don't see it. Okay. I've got, oh, I'm oh, sorry. I've got, um, are, are you done, Councilor Van Hazen? Because I've got um, Councilor Boschman and Councilor Walsh that want to speak. I just had a, a very quick point, uh, if, if you don't mind. Um, sure. Uh, so right now, there's at least 27 feet there. That is very wide for one lane of travel, even with the loading zone. Um, it, and it does encourage speeding on that street. You have traffic that comes off of Main Street and people hit the gas and, and tear up the street because it is very wide. And there is, you know, the elderly housing uh, development operating the housing authority right up the next property up. And I think it's a dangerous situation to have that much pavement there. And I don't, I understand the concern about the fire apparatus, but I, I think there's plenty of room there. And I think there's in fact too much room there that creates a dangerous situation. Thank you, Councillor Boschman. Uh, first of all, the first thing I wanna say, uh, if the chair, Madam Chair remembers uh, when Fidelity came up in front of us and they talked about their building they wanted to build on that corner lot. And we brought up that we didn't want them to take a, take a left turn coming out of the parking lot on Main Street. So they asked us at that meeting if we would accept a two-way day from, I think it was from the parking lot, Councilor Green, yeah, down. from the parking lot down. Yeah, yeah the... and we, we accepted that and, and we passed that as a council, if I'm not mistaken, at that time when Fidelity came in front of us. Now, the second thing I want to ask the question to the position there, are we going to put parking meters in? And if not, why not? So... I have, there's nothing in the petition about parking meters or restrictions. I think that's something to be decided. Um, Councilor Walsh. Uh, thank you. I, I noticed that uh, Councilor Kucher has made a motion to move it to uh, public works and that's what, what I was going to suggest. So you can consider mine a second to his motion. All right, and I do have um, Mr. Sawowski that wants to chime in. I just saw his hand wave. So I'm happy to hear his comments moving forward with um, zoning and planning. You're muted. You're on mute, Tom. <laughs> See what I say? So- Thanks and sorry. <laughs> another, another committee, I'll keep it brief, but um, just to Sergeant Pujaro's question of who needs the parking there. Um, I have an outstanding invitation to this committee to present the results of our parking study. Um, I'd love to talk about that with you all at some point in the future. Uh, and the, the gist of the study is that we don't have a parking problem downtown. This one spot is really the only exception, I'd say. Um, and the, the whole Day Street area, the reason Mary Jo and I are here um, is the, the Day Street condominium complex in addition to select engineering 35 Day Street and the Hotel Raymond, that confluence there has created a really high demand for parking. And we've got some issues off street. Our off street parking lot has some really antiquated systems that we need to update. But on street, um, the more parking spots that we can add, I would recommend holding off on meters until we modernize our system a bit perhaps. Um, but we need the spots. And that's why Mary Jo and I are here on behalf of those businesses that really do need parking in that area. So we could talk more about that and the whole parking study at some other time, but just wanted to throw that out there. Motion Thank to move you for your, works. Right. Thank, Thank you for your um, input, both you and Mary Jo on the work that you've done taking on uh, 
parking, <laughs> which we've heard about for at least seven years. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a motion and now a second to move this petition to the public works uh, subcommittee. All those in favor? We'll do this right. now, but is there any more discussion on that? Okay. Uh, Councilor Van Hazinga. Yes. Councilor Walsh. Yes. Councilor Boschman. Yes. Councilor Kutcher. Yes. And I'm Councilor Green. Yes. So we are moving 173 to Public Works. Thank you. And last on our agenda tonight is 19320. Sergeant Daniel Boudreaux, Fitchburg Fire Department Traffic Unit and Nicholas Bassanetto, DPW Commissioner, to amend Section 169, Chapter 24, Parking Prohibited at All Times, Beach Street East Side from Litchfield Street South to Kimball Street, Beach Street West Side from Kimball Street to, Pat, to Pratt Street. Sergeant Boudreaux. Yes, Council, as this was um, discussed when they, they came up with the original plan to redo the sidewalks up there, and repave that section of Beach Street. Um, it just goes back to some of the things that we were talking about before. The, the roadway, it just isn't wide enough to allow parking. Um, there was already some no parking um, ordinance passed. We're just kind of, we're extending parts of that um, to the sections of the roadway that just aren't wide enough to allow parking. Uh, one thing I will say, Councilor, is however you vote on this, um, I, I did the petition, but I, I added a word in there we need to take out. So where it says Beach Street East Side from Litchfield Street, Litch yeah. Litchfield Street to Kimball Street, I added a South in there for some reason. I'll make a motion to amend the petition to remove the word South. Second. Second. I have a motion second to amend the petition to remove the word South. From this petition, any more discussion needed on this? Hearing none. Um, so I have an amended petition 19320. All those in favor will do um, vote. Councillor Van Hazinga? Yes. Councillor Walsh? Is this to approve the petition or approve the amendment? We're approving the amendment. Yes. Uh, Councillor Boschman. Yep. Uh, Councillor Kutcher. Yes. And myself is a yes also. So um, before us then we have the amended petition 19320. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and second to approve uh, 19320 as amended. Any discussion? On the motion, on the motion, I just want to make it very clear that we understand one of the. I already talked to Sergeant Bujo that there will be parking on the east side from Litchfield down to Pratt Street. Sergeant Bujo. Yeah, yeah, that, that's not in our petition, so there, there would still be parking there. Okay, this one. Okay. okay, thank you. All right, uh, Councillor Van Hazinga. Yes. Councilor Walsh. Yes. Councilor Boschman. Yeah. Councilor Kutcher. Yes. And myself, Councilor Green, is a yes. Do I have a motion to um... adjourn? <laughs> Where are the words tonight? <laughs> I'll make that motion. Thank you. Thank right. You. Thank you. I have a motion and second to adjourn, and I assume that we'll do that unanimously. Yes. Right. Yes. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you <coughs> for appointments. Thank, Thank you, you, and good night. Thank you. We have city council tonight, too. Right.